this in the 70s. We lived in it for about seven years. It was definitely hippy-dippy time. But um, eventually we built a real house that had plumbing. So uh, <laughs> this became my studio. The county was good enough to give us a permit to make it into a studio. And it's been the, the most wonderful gift I could have ever given myself um, because I can get away from the house. I come down here and it's another world and I'm right on the bank of this river that is my inspiration. So I, one of the biggest things that happened besides getting the studio was being able to get out in the river in a kayak. And that's where I discovered real silence. And it just opened up a whole new world of ideas for painting for me because I was able to go where no man has gone before and find a way to interpret the, um, the grasses in pretty purely abstract terms. So it was the best of both worlds. I didn't want to paint really representational stuff. I wanted to get into the complexity and be able to cut loose. So um, between those two capacities, you know, having the river right here and having a studio right smack on it and being able to retire from other, other things I had been doing for money, I've been able to paint full time for the last 10 years at least, but really for my whole life. I, I live in a beautiful place. We have a comfortable home. We don't need very much. We're in our 70s and we'll probably work until they have to drag us out of here, but um, I don't know what else I do. I don't know what, I, what else I do besides painting and gardening and babysitting. When we first came into the studio, we're in a, what I call the front room. It used to be a screen porch, but it's now my wood room. It's where I store all my stretcher strips, the wooden pieces that, that hold the canvas, and, um, and, and that's where I make the frames and I store the, the wood for the frames. So that's the, that gets pretty messy, but um, it keeps the sawdust out of this part of the studio, which is good. And then this part of the studio is where the actual work gets done. I have a desk over in the corner where I do my drawings and, uh, and kind of come up with the ideas and play with color and just make a mess. I have shoe boxes full of photographs that I've taken over the years and I kind of mine them. I go into the photographs and find little parts that are really interesting or intriguing and then do a, a sketch and then do a, paint, the, paint the sketch, do it in, in color. And then I'll often put it in the computer and then put it in Photoshop and play with the color and say, oh, this would be a lot better if it was more golden or this would be better if it was more blue. And I can do that with the computer, which I couldn't do before. So that's been a boon. And then I start the process of actually figuring out how big the final piece is gonna be. And often when I'm looking at a sketch, I can go, oh, you wanna be big, I can tell. Or no, you have a small voice, you wanna be a little one. And then I'll stretch the canvas, and this is a, a new one we just did, and um, figure out what the composition is gonna be like on, the, on a large scale, because going from a small scale to a large scale changes everything. I don't measure everything out I just kind of go by the seat of my pants and depend on my instincts. Unfortunately, because of my mother, I have good instincts and I can kind of lay it out and see where the energy lines are going to converge and see where it's going to become really quiet and where it's going to be really busy. I'm trying to connect the psyche, your feelings, your thoughts, your, your existence as a person in this world with the world outside. So it's more like a a metaphor for feelings. So some paintings will be very happy and some paintings will be very pensive. Some will be really crazy. Some will be sad. And I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of, of looking at sadness and processing it through the paintings. That's been very valuable to me, much cheaper than a psychiatrist. And uh, hopefully show a new face of the natural world that is a little unusual. We have to be as gentle with nature as we are. We try to be with ourselves, and to, that it's not that we're not pitted against nature, that we're part of it, and we have to be humble. Some people want to know if this work is abstract or if it's uh, representational, and I tend to think of it as a combination. That you can see the natural world and relate to it as real grass or real water or real whatever. But to me, I look at it and I go, "Oh, you're." you're having a party. 
or oh, you're sad about something. What, what are you sad about? I don't know, I, and I don't know until I'm finished with the painting what it's trying to tell me. It's almost like it's in there and it's coming out. And I have to, it's like having a child. You give it a name and send it off.